Okay, in section um, 1 1, we learned about writing numerical expressions. And in this uh, section, we're going to talk about translating verbal phrases into algebraic expressions. I want you to right here put the definition of algebra. We talked about this a couple of days ago. What is algebra? Put your, uh, in your own words, your definition of algebra. If you need to go look that back up, I think you'll be able to summarize in your own words the definition for algebra. All right, so before we move on to our second objective today, I want to talk about what is a variable. A variable is a letter or symbol used to represent an unknown value. Okay, so what makes an algebraic expression? Well, it's when an expression, like those we made yesterday, uh, when they contain at least one variable. Unlike a numerical expression, which only has numbers and operations. So, for example, numerical expressions 2 plus 3, all of that times 4, would be what we did yesterday. To make it an algebraic expression, it would be uh, 4 times 2 plus X, where we now have a, a letter in our problem. So that makes it go from just a numerical expression to an algebraic expression. It doesn't even have to have that much. It could just be something then as simple as 2X or even X turns it into an algebraic expression. So the first step of translating to an algebraic expression is to choose a variable. Okay, you have to choose the variable to represent the unknown quantity. This is called defining the variable. All right, let me give you an example. Translate each phrase into an algebraic expression. Define the variable when first. So you need to get in the habit of the first thing you do is to decide what your variable is going to be and what it's going, going to represent. 35 more than the number of tickets sold. <clears throat> I want to stop right there before we even go any further. And I want to highlight, if I could, the word than. Whenever you read a word problem and you encounter the word than, I want you to know that what comes after than, anything after than should be written first. You need to write that down and ingrain that in your mind. Anything after the word than goes first. Let me show you what I mean, what this is going to look like. Okay. 35 more than the number of tickets sold. So what do I not know? I do not know the number of tickets sold. So I need to come up with a variable to represent number of tickets sold. Since ticket starts with a T, I'm going to let T equal the number of tickets. Okay, so what came after then? The number of tickets, which is T. So it's going to go first. And it's 35 more, so more would be our keyword to tell us to add. So notice I put 35 last because it was before then. So anything that comes after then goes first. Now that seems like a very trivial, uh, a trivial thing when we're talking about tickets plus 35 or 35 plus tickets. But when it becomes a subtraction problem, which is what we're going to in encounter here, uh, the order is very important. So remember that anytime you hear the word than, whatever comes after than goes first. <clears throat> the difference of six times a number and ten. All right, this problem doesn't have the word than in it. So we know difference means we're going to be subtracting six times what? A number. So what do I not know? I do not know the number. So you could let it be n for number. 
but whenever I don't know the number, I usually call that x. So I'm going to say let x equal the unknown number. Okay? Or a number in this case. So it's the difference of 6 times a number and 10. So 6 is multiplied. 6 times what? Times that number I do not know. It's the difference of 6 times the number and 10. Okay? That is the first half of our objective. To be able to translate a verbal, verbal phrase into an algebraic expression. Now we're going to need to evaluate. What did evaluate mean yesterday? It meant find the value. So we're evaluating the expression containing the variable. So here we go. To evaluate means to find the numeric value of an algebraic exp expression. Replace the variable with the known values. Then use the order of operations. So evaluate if x is 27 and y is 12. So they're going to tell us the value of x and the value of y in our expression. So here's our expression. So in place of x, I'm going to substitute 27 minus, and in place of y, I'm going to substitute 12 plus 6. So you're just replacing the variable with the value. And 27 minus 12, again, order of operations, we're moving from left to right. Addition and subtraction are equal in order of operations. So 15 plus 6 and 21 is our final outcome. Okay, moving on over to the back, we're going to evaluate some more expressions. And for the sake of time, I'm going to ask you to do A and B on your own. But I would like to work C with you. So we have 5Z. Notice how I'm going to put parentheses just to say 5 times Z and replace Z with 7 plus. Now here's parentheses already. But within the parentheses, I'm going to substitute X, which was 3 plus 4 times y, using parentheses here, which is 4, minus 15. So parentheses are your friend. 5 times 7 is not the first thing I need to take care of. I need to start with my grouping symbol and go uh, take care of everything inside the original parentheses. So 3 is going to hang out while I say 4 times 4 is 16. Now I'm ready to take care of my parentheses because that's the order of operation. 3 and 16 are, is 19. Now moving from left to right, I take care of multiplication. We get 35 plus 19 minus 15. So now addition and subtraction are equal. So I'll just go ahead and add and get 54 minus 15 and 39 is my final answer. So notice you use parentheses to represent where the variable was and you substitute the value for each variable and then take care of those original parentheses which is your grouping symbol. Within those then you obey the order of operation. Multiplication comes before addition. Then we add within parentheses. Then we multiply. I think you should know this. This should be reviewed. Let's look at this uh, example four word problem together. Don't forget to go back and do A and B, please, on your own. East Middle School sold tickets for a play. The price of an adult ticket is $3. The price of a student ticket is $1. Write an expression. Now, that means don't evaluate. We're not going to have an answer. We're just setting it up. Write an expression that represents the total amount of money collected. Okay, the first thing I have to do when I am writing an algebraic expression is what? Oh, I wish I could hear you say, define your variable. Define the variables in this problem. That's your first step. Okay, so what do we not know? We know the cost of each ticket. Adults are three and students are one. What I don't know is I don't know how many tickets 
they sold. I don't know how many adult tickets were sold. So I'm going to let A stand for adult tickets or the number of adult tickets sold. And I'm going to let S, which is always tricky. I like to put a little curl on my S so it doesn't look like a 5, stand for the number of student tickets sold. So at $3 a pop, 3 times A, 3 times each adult, adult ticket sold, plus however many student tickets were sold, they're a dollar each, this would be my algebraic expression, 3A plus 1S. Alright, so part B says now let's suppose we know that A was 70. They sold 70 adult tickets and S is 85. They sold 85 student tickets. Now how much money was collected? So at $3 for each ticket, and there were 70 of those, and $1 for the 85 student tickets, that's going to give us $210 plus $85, a total of $295. Alright, and I also want you to try example 5 on your own, and we'll check those together in class. Thank you, and always remember, what do you do first? Define your variable. Have a great day.